thought I would do a little weekend style uh, crisis season vlog. How's your crisis season going? Oh no, what is that? I thought I tidied everything up. So I wanted to show you what we've been doing to kind of stay sane uh, indoors with two little children. And she seems to be coping well in quarantine. She seems like she's living her best life. Um, I will go over kind of what we've been doing for homeschool and the resources that we've been using for Theo. He is nearly five, so he's pre-K age. So if you have kids that age, maybe these books, resources will be helpful. So I'll show you what I've done with him. And then I want to show you a quick homemade lotion recipe that I've been experimenting with when you don't have lots of supplies. And yeah, let's go see how my little makeshift double boiler is doing. Uh, and laundry I have to do. Made some muffins, buckwheat muffins. That's why they're so dark tried to kind of make them exciting but we'll see do you ever find you know these are healthier a little bit they're good um but you don't want them to be so good that everybody eats them in like one second and then i also made another batch of rusks if you don't know what they are they're kind of a um south african not a delicacy but like a specialty so they're kind of like biscotti they're hard it's essentially sweet a sweet bread these are like a non-dairy version of buttermilk rusks uh comment down below if you've ever had a rusk <laughs> but it's basically like a biscotti um but thicker and you dunk them they're they have to be dried out so that's why they're in the oven basically you dunk them in tea or coffee to soften them and you eat them and they last for a long time because they're already kind of stale because you dried them out so good okay so if you don't know what a double boiler is it's essentially you can buy fancy ones it's like a pot with another pot on top hot water at the bottom and it heats it up and people use it a lot for melting chocolate because chocolate is super heat sensitive and if you melt it if you make the heat just a little bit too much it will um harden and like crumble and you can't get nice like smooth melty chocolate i've created my own double boiler i'm gonna put because i'm making lotion and it gets very greasy i'm gonna put this jug let's see if it'll sit there please i put a top of a mason jar you can see in there just to create some kind of gap. And then I I made these lotion bars. Let's see, I made these lotion bars maybe last weekend, but I put, whoa, but I put too much beeswax in them. And so they're quite hard. They take a long time to melt. Obviously, well not obviously, but if you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm an OT and I work in a hospital and I have to wash my hands a million times a day. So I had some beeswax at home. Some of you also may know, I've been trying to live a more sort of plant-based kind of to the environment lifestyle and beeswax is not really in conjunction with that uh, but that was before i kind of knew about all of this so i'm just trying to use it up but you can you can also use canuba wax the wax really hardens it um but you actually have to use a lot less than you think and i think i use too much so i'm going to make this spread a lot longer and i will put recipes to both my kind of version of lotion and a beeswax free version with kind of homemade easy to have ingredients because i don't know if everybody would just have shea butter on hand but you can definitely use that with uh, homemade lotion so children are waking up <laughs> um but i'm gonna melt this lotion bar that i made oh camera i'm gonna melt this lotion bar and then i'm gonna add some olive oil and see whoops see what it what kind of consistency it looks like and i will share it with you guys but i have to go and deal with that right now been very lucky that she's been happy all right so you see it's melting Oh, but I'm gonna switch it's really low. I might just woo do that. It kind of looks like butter melting. Um, and then I'm gonna add olive oil once it's cooled down and see what happens. Hi. Let me know if anyone else's children do this, but I feel like we have to wash all the time because they want to wear the same clothes all the time. She literally wants to wear the same outfits, and she's going through this <laughs> whole thing of clean but very messy laundry trying to find her favorite clothes just me okay so the lotion bar has melted down i'm gonna add some olive oil i don't know how i'm gonna do this with one hand let's try just a little bit to kind of 
make it melt a little easier. I don't even know. I am really kind of guessing this because it's an experiment, which is probably not helpful if you want to replicate it. And then I'm going to pour it while it's still liquid into my little jar. Seems like a good size. Ooh, 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 that looks good. And you can see as soon as it's thin, it kind of like hardens. I've read that you should use jars that you don't really want to use again because it's hard to clean, but with enough washing, you can clean it. Okay, so now we're gonna wait and let this set. And then I have, it's kind of overzealous. I made, I've got two more of these bars. I'll see how this one goes and then I'll see what I can add. Okay, so here's our lotion. Um, in a little jar. Oh yeah, it's still kind of soft because it's still cooling down, but it feels pretty good. And you know, homemade lotion. So we'll see how this goes and I will report back. Also, how cute is this? I don't know if anyone, I don't know if this was just a South African thing, um, but I had lots of sticker books as a child and I was reorganizing some things. Yeah, Let me know if you want to see a video about how I repurpose different parts of my house because we want to put a desk in our bedroom yep, just mommy. because we're working from home so much yep, we have to reorganize some things oh mommy. oh yeah anyway so lily found this sticker book of mine ah it's like so nostalgic oops and she loves she loves stickers so i'm hoping i just have to teach her not to take them all off because then I'm like, what? I mean, what's the point of keeping all of these if she if she's getting a lot of pleasure out of them? But I don't want her to destroy it, you know? Uh, now it's her book, apparently. It's your book? Mine. So I wanted to show you some of the books we've been using for Theo to kind of structure some level of homeschooling. It's not like a normal school thing where you're, um, you know, where he's going to school like eight to four every day or whatever it is, eight to three. Um, we yeah. kind of just do it in pockets and he's four, so yeah. four and a half. So he can only concentrate for a certain amount of time before he kind of gets over it. So I just wanted to show you some of these books in case you guys want to get them for yourselves. I will link them down below. Um, I also made a chore chart in my previous video, so check that out if you want to get a free printable of kind of a chore chart that we have been using, I'll show you a little bit here. Um, so let's look at these books. This one is very popular on Amazon. I think this is like a big preschool one. Okay, so my audio failed me, but I just wanted to show you uh, this book over here. So this is for three to five year olds. Uh, I like it because it has a lot of different types of exercises, like pre-reading skills, you know, like left to right find a maze, um, it's kind of just fun, there's also coloring in, it's just basic kind of stuff. Um, and I think it's useful for younger kids especially. And then we really like this book, which is Learn to Read Activity Book. And this is basically teaching reading to someone who doesn't know how to teach uh, a child how to read basically. So it starts off with the letters and the recognition. There's a lot of repetition. You go over the lessons. It's like teaching reading for dummies, right? Because I don't know how to teach a child how to read. Uh, but I'm finding myself in that situation where I feel like I need to just help them a little bit. So you start off with the big letters. They have a lot of pictures associated with, with it. And then it goes into blending and what I'm learning blending families. So this one here is the at family. So you can see there's like sat, at, hat. And it's interesting teaching kids and seeing what they pick up and what kind of resonates with them. So it's been interesting and fun actually teaching him. Uh, you can see over here, this is like small word, short words to help him recognize them. So we've got like log would be lobster, octopus, grasshopper, and then hat, lid, uh, rag and ham just kind of basic words that he can start to hear and see What the sounds that he's hearing what they look like on a page So I'm excited to get through that book with him and we try and do a page or two every day depending on how his concentration kind of holds out And then the next set of books is just very basic math book math readiness super cheap on Amazon this is a sight words book, which we haven't actually got to yet. So I think this will come with time. I'm realizing that we learn how to read through 
multiple exposures to words and then I also have this little mini book book <laughs> so you can construct little books with different word families that I explained before like the at word family the art word family I guess that and then you can create little books I made him a little pencil case with multiple different types of pens and then this is the chore chart that I was talking about in my previous video and I actually updated it with better pictures and things and he's written his name there uh, and then uh, it's even better if you can actually laminate it I just have it in a plastic sleeve but if you laminate it that's even better so basically you have the option you can either like write down on the piece of paper make your bed eat your breakfast brush your teeth get dressed do your schoolwork whatever it is or if your child is kind of pre-reading and you just want to do pictures totally fine I added in some you know crisis appropriate clip art over there with the gloves the hand washing um, I put in some play things play there play with not so much with friends play with other children you play with your little sister and then you would check it off like this so it's really good to do yes stars yep they're your favorite do you see the dinosaurs yeah yeah and the little ducks <gasps> wow froggy. a froggy I'm glad you like this book yeah so ideally your child would be checking these off as you get the day and then you can set it up to get a reward or some kind of I don't know like a star on a chart or some screen time or choose an activity to do with mom or dad bake a cake or something as your kind of incentive to help them and it also just kind of structures their day and my hope is that eventually it'll just become second nature Mumu loves the sun. Mumu loves the sun. And then some other things that we found useful are little, these are kind of things they would do at school. So these are worksheets from his school. It's like color in the pictures, circle the picture that does not belong in the group. And it kind of helps them start to work on their analytical reasoning and that kind of stuff. Um, they were doing a whole lesson on living versus non-living things. So in this case, what is this? Like a glass bottle with a crack in it <laughs> and a duck and a paper cup and a newspaper and a box and like which one of these is the odd one out so I think that's a good skill to start learning how to do because it can get really tricky so one thing I think the silver lining to crisis season is that you know now I have a much better idea of what Theo does at school and even with these zoom calls and things it's very cute it doesn't kind of replace hello how are you it doesn't kind of replace school and the childcare and the structure and all that kind of stuff. But it does give us an insight on what he's learning and what he's expected to learn. And it's interesting. And I think it's, a, it's an interesting time. I don't know if we would get this opportunity again to spend so much time with our kids and to really be so active in their education. Part of me always like wanted to homeschool the hippie, hippie granola part of me. I know people would think that's crazy, but I... You know, as long as long as he's cooperating, which obviously everybody says, it's so sweet and nice to learn and learn with him and see how he learns and really invest in him. Like I would be totally open to doing it, um, except I don't really have a lot of skill in it. But maybe just being present, especially at this age, as they get older, like I don't know how I would teach maths and physics and stuff like that. But at this little, at this young age, I feel like we have a lot of things we can do as parents. It's just overwhelming. And we've only done homeschooling like for one week, so we're not experts by any means. Yes. What's up? You say hello? What do you need? Okay. Okay. And then the, the other thing that I think we've realized, or that's been really helpful, is that because now we know what he's expected to learn or like the little lessons that you're teaching kids, we can really incorporate that into everyday life and cement the concepts. So, who's that? What's that? Peaches? Oh, Father Christmas? Does anyone else call Santa Father Christmas? Thumbs up if you do. Um, so, what do I say? What was I say? Interrupted all the time. So, for example, the living, non-living thing, it's really easy to incorporate that into daily life. And obviously that is the intention of the lesson. I'm sure the teachers want us to be doing that too. But because we usually have no idea of what they're actually learning at school, you know, we wouldn't necessarily solidify that concept for them. So, yeah. yeah. Silver lining. Oh my gosh. I guess that's 
my cue. Yeah. Theo, do you want to say hello to the camera? What face is that? Happy. Uh, You're happy, Lily? That's a happy face? Alright, you guys. Gotta go. Do some active parenting right now. How was your nap, Theo? This boy never naps. But sometimes we all need a nap, you know? When did your kids stop napping? This one stopped napping, I would say two and a half. What do you think? Yeah, consistently two and a half. Unless like we took him in the car or something, which is not something we do very often. And what are we doing? Ah, that's daddy's, Theo, that's daddy's iPad. Okay guys, I hope you're having a great weekend. Crisis season. Peace be with you, stay healthy, stay safe, wear a mask, all that good stuff. And I will see you soon, bye.